everybody. Welcome to another Egg Pod here on a Monday night with Easy Gaming Group. I see we have some people in chat already. It's a hazard to badger, not blastios, filth of casual. Welcome, welcome to this evening's uh, chat array. I was going to give it some other weird name, but I thought I'd just go with something. Simple. Yeah, I almost said something now no, as no, well, don't, but I'm rather don't. not you just, <laughs> You'd be driving to Springs and back. You'd be quiet. Again, welcome to our very special guest this evening, Alvin Fenter from White Rabbit E-Gaming. Or is it just E-Games or is it gaming? Gaming. Just White Rabbit Gaming. White Rabbit Gaming. Thanks for joining us. Adam, as always, thank you for joining us. Good day, good sirs. You'll um, notice that chat. Adam's wearing a cap. He's doing that because he thinks his hair looks crap. So yeah, my hair game is all messed up today. Sorry, guys. <laughs> I've been, I've been, I've been dealing with things. Okay. So for those of you who might be wondering why on earth we brought Alvain in from White Rabbit Gaming, where White Rabbit focuses a lot more on on things like Dota and Apex Legends and and those kinds of games, we brought him in because believe it or not, this man has been playing Magic for a very long time. Tell us a little bit about your 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 magic history there, Elvain. Uh Geez, yeah. So um, magic. I actually started playing during, believe it or not, I think it was uh, during revised. Um, so around about was nineteen ninety five ish. Around about there, somewhere there. Wow. Okay. So, um, yeah, I was in primary school. Um, <laughs> Adam's like, you're old, dude. <laughs> yeah, I know, I know, I know. <laughs> so, and, and I actually still remember, um, crystal clear, when I was actually introduced to the game, um, I have a friend, Edwin, that, uh, that I got to know, um, you know, during primary school. And um, I remember during one of the, one of, one of the days we were um, in after, like, aftercare or like, I don't know what you call it in English, you know, but uh, this was an school that, yeah. that you, so you go after, after school, they feed you and, you know, then you need to keep yourself busy. And, uh, you know, he brought like two packs of cards that he, that he brought to, um, you know, to, to the study group or whatever. And, um, you know, we were sitting there and, you know, he was, he was playing this, the cards. And I remember, you know, he casted a Shivan dragon. I will never, never, never forget that. That was my first like introduction to the creature world of magic was the Shivan dragon. And, um, you know, he casted that and I was absolutely just amazed. I was hooked and I just saw him sweep like the board, like killing everything. <laughs> Shivan yeah, dragon so was I, a great card. It, it was amazing. Like during that time, if you got a Shivan dragon on, my goodness, it was amazing. Yeah, it's pay so, red, pump, pay red, pump, pay red, pump, pay red. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, and yeah, so he. Um, I asked him a few questions about it. He took the time, introduced me to the game, and uh, I've been playing since then. You know, uh, on and off. Sadly, I think like most people, um, had a massive collection. I played for many, many, many years um, until around about Dark Steel Fifth Dawn. That blocks it. Um, I stopped playing there. Uh, I've got a really, really sad story to tell you about that as well. Um, when I sold my cards and I realized when I started playing Magic again, what it was worth. Um, but that's a story for another day. So yeah, I stopped playing, sold all my cards because I was a student and I wanted to party and drink and, you know, like pay for my textbooks, which was quite a big thing as well. So, uh, <laughs> See, not last year, I said two beards and one rabbit. That's what we've got going on tonight. <laughs> yeah, <probably. laughs> um, I just got a quick, sorry, Adam, I see you got a question as well, but I just wanted to ask you real quick, Alvin, I mean, yeah, the love of gaming didn't stop with magic though. I mean, that's, that's one of the reasons for White Rabbit. Um, yeah. But that obviously came along a bit later in your life. Actually, gaming was first. Magic came afterwards. Um, I got my first gaming console when I was four years old. Um, it was an old Atari... Um, 2600. The, the old, yeah, that's the one. 2600. <laughs> the one with the joystick and the one red button. Yeah. So you uh, baby, bro. <laughs> bought me that because uh, I was quite a busy child and they couldn't keep me occupied for long enough. So they bought me a gaming system and kept me engaged. Which literally, I mean, almost forty years later, you know, is literally the best thing that they've ever invested in. I would say, but I'm biased. So <laughs> <laughs> you completely took the question out of my mouth. Thank you, Chris. I'm oh, sorry, dude. I, I didn't mean to. <laughs> no, but that's that's actually interesting. Four years old, getting your Atari and going from there, and to what you have today, it's uh, it's kind of a journey, don't you think? Yeah, yeah, quite massive. So uh, I see there's a question in in uh, in chat from Not Blastoise. Uh, what was your favorite deck that you remember playing? My hmm. favorite, all-time favorite deck. I've actually these two. Um, these two that I played, and one that I wish I could build that I played. One, uh, the wish, the, the one that I wish I could build uh, was the one that Kai Bud 
he won worlds with it. It was the whole monolith tap, untap, you know, untap this artifact to charge something. Um, it was quite a technical deck, and he was he was he was kind of like the god of magic at that point in time. Um, I never got around to, to 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 building it because cards were quite expensive. My parents didn't want to invest in it. But my favorite decks that I actually played, um, all-time favorite, was the the Arcbound Ravager deck when that came out with Dark Steel. It was it was insane. You know, you had the artifact lands that you could play and Skull Clamp, Skull, yo, Skull, Skull Clamp, Clamp, one of the best cards ever printed. Um, so Skull Clamp, and then you had the Ornithopters, all of those kind of things. And you just sack everything and like charge through something that he couldn't um, couldn't block. And then you had the Disciple of the Vault, just as a backup. You know, every time you sack an artifact, he takes, he, you know, he loses life. I loved that deck. Um, I loved it so much that I built the entire deck. I spent about four or six months to trade every single card in that deck to be a foil. Which which I managed to do in the end. <laughs> See, we're all mad. We're deck. all mad. I had uh, I sold that entire deck for three and a half grand, dude. Three and a half grand. Yeah. Like, yeah. So I look at the value now, and I'm like, jeez, man. So <laughs> um, and funny enough, uh, Zo, 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 Zoe Zoe Zoe. Yeah. Zoe. Um, that was the second. That was my second favorite deck that you mentioned. There was the Tooth and Nail. Um, we 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 had that, and it was. Ray, I think it was Raging Baloth or something like that. And then there was like a Rhino or something card as well, uh, where you go fetch like uh, two two really, really big creatures in your deck. So Tooth and Nail and, um, and yeah, the Ravager decks, I, the, 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 they were so, so much fun. But now nah, listen, just listening to you talk about the way you enjoy the combos going off, etc., etc., etc. We were talking a little bit off air and we were talking about Commander and you say you haven't played it yet, but I'm telling you, you would love Commander. You'd absolutely love it. You'd do your nutting for the just the kind of combos that you can pull off, the power levels that you can reach with Commander decks. They'll blow your mind. <laughs> like proper. I guess what, what it sounds like Commander, as, as you're right, you know, I've, I've never played Commander in my life. Um, I've heard about it. I, I haven't even seen the format being, being played, but uh, what I've heard is that it's a lot slower, almost like an extended version of Two-Headed Giants. And um, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm keen, you know, as soon as... As, as soon as um, you know, face-to-face -face play gets up again, I'm quite keen to see what it's all about. Take a little bit of time okay. if work allows. And... Well, listen, then then you should stop by here on Wednesday night, eight o'clock. We're playing some Commander live here on on the Easy Gaming Group stream. You can check it out on Commander, and you can get a sense for what it's all about. Uh, but I see that Zoe's actually channeling Cora right now and sending you Cora messages, which say Mephidros Vampire and Triskelion was so great for tooth. That's so true, Triskelion. I actually forgot about that card. <laughs> yeah, that's that's that that's pretty good as well. Yeah. Uh, what some um, year did you talk about Kai Button winning? Was it 1999? Um, you know what? If you give me a second, I can actually check for you. Um, I've got good. a a red artifact wildfire deck that he won yeah. with World Champions. Sounds. Okay, Adam, you need to just fun. slap Icarus there, right? Just give him a slap in chat there. Just like a, I'll do it. Yeah, we're gonna have to ban Nick eventually, <laughs> but not yet, though. Not yet. Not yet. Not yet. <laughs> we'll, we'll give him like another five minutes to get himself in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that had um, four fire diamonds, four grim mon monoliths, four Vikey keys, one con silver golem. That's the one. Yep. Yeah, that's the deck there. It's 13 mountains. That, that should be burns, actually, that deck. <laughs> it's a very scary sounding deck. I think you, someone should do something about that. Well, let's let, let's just be honest, you know. I mean, that 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 that's I remember the days where you could literally build a deck with like, you know, anything between like 12 and 14 lands, and you would still be fine. Um, you know, nowadays, you know, you build a deck with 12 and 14 lands, you can like draw spells and not be able to play anything for like ages. So, You'll be dead. Yeah. But that happens. That happens in general with me. Even I've run everything lands, we'll just never draw. <laughs> and Adam them. plays like thirty-eight lands and still gets mana screwed. That's <laughs> that is so true. That is so true. <laughs> oh jeez. <laughs> Nick could actually. Nick could actually be. Um, he was witness to that at the pre-release uh, two weekends ago. Oh yeah. And when he supposedly beat me. But that stands that stands under correction because I didn't have mana. <sighs> uh, uh, okay. <laughs> the nostalgia. There's a sigh. There's a sigh from not blessed <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, there were, there were there were some good decks. I mean, uh, oh, the other. Uh, you know what? The other deck that I that I also enjoyed playing. 
now that I think of it, did you guys ever play a deck, um, Patriot, the, the Goblin Bidding deck? No, bro, I, I, I also, like you, no. unfortunately, I, I ditched out of Magic for a while, so I missed out on a lot of things before I came back in. That was one of them. Okay, so so for the people in the channel, I mean, uh, check that out. You know, um, go go and look for a card called Patriarch's Bidding. Um, so what it, what it basically, basically does, it's a black card. I think it's three generic, two black, if I remember correctly. Um, here it is. So it's three generic, two black, yeah. Each player chooses a creature type. Each player returns all creature cards of a chosen to, um, of a type chosen this way from his graveyard to play. So what you would do is you would literally just throw down goblins the whole time. It was a black, black red goblin deck. So you throw down like anything, you know, like the one one goblins, you know, anything with haste. Um, Siege game sack them all. was massive <laughs> during that time as well. So Goblin. and you would literally just sacrifice goblins left, right, and center until you've got enough to cast patriarchs bidding, and then things just get messy. It's 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 such 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 a cool deck. Okay, so Zoe says, oh no, Gobbo's Dark Supplicant is the true Patriarch deck. And then Badger <laughs> says, I need this for my Rat Commander deck. <laughs> yeah, Patriarch's bidding, dude. It's it's such a rad card. Um, Onslaught was the was the expansion that that was part of. It was, um, yeah, also a great time for Magic. Jeez, man, you guys are making me so nostalgic. See, you've got to come back and play. Yeah, I do. You've got to but come back and play. That, you know, I'm going to be like so poor if I start playing again now, so. <laughs> okay, so this Goblin's Bidding deck is pretty scary. It's pretty rad, yeah. So it's, Damnation, um, Patriarch's Bidding, Wheel of Fate, what? Yeah, I'm busy looking at that right now. It looks, it looks like a lot of fun. Each player discards, yeah, this is, this is the, I guess not for opponents. This is like wheels were a big thing, hey, back then, when you just like everybody just wheels their hand. It's crazy. Skull Clamp, now you see Skull Clamp in Commander is a ridiculous card. Because you've got okay. commanders that want you to kill things, to do things, and so you play little one ones, and then you just skull clamp them and draw stuff to do more stuff. To skull clamp again. <laughs> <laughs> now, dude, is, if there's if there's another card, okay, that 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 you, I'm not sure if it's if it's um, if it's banned or restricted in any deck at the moment, but um, whenever we played between friends, you you this was before the um, you know modern decks and stuff came out when when you just when we had just had standard. So um, this mate of mine, Stefan, um, he lives in the UK now. He he was a massive Goblin fan. So he he always played Patriarch's Bidding. And whenever we weren't playing Standard at, at the stores, okay, he he used a card called Goblin Lackey in his deck as well. Do you guys know that? No. Not Goblin Lackey, okay. It's one red for a 1-1 one, one Goblin. And what the ability is, whenever a Goblin Lackey successfully deals damage to a player, you may choose a Goblin card in your hand and put that Goblin into play. Yeah, I'm busy looking That's at that thing. Now the silly. artwork first is amazing. So what Secondly, is that looks like a damn good card. Okay, is you've got a siege gang commander in your hand, all right? Then you you play Goblin Lackey. So you play Goblin Lackey first first turn, he plays a land, second turn you attack, you play that, you put your siege gang commander with three other goblins <laughs> into it. <It's, laughs> it really, really is disgusting. But uh yeah, geez, that was that was the that was the good old days of like really, really, really quick magic, but um, tons of fun. Yeah. I mean, do you, okay. Sounds so like we're gonna have to get you back into magic then, um, Olven. Yeah. Look, I mean, I'm not, uh, I'm not opposed to the idea, as you would have heard. You know, so I'm yeah, yeah. A huge fan. I've got it just in front of me. I've got a huge drawer filled with cards. I just need to go through them and see what I'm allowed to play with and uh, what not. Okay. So this is, this is. Sorry, I'm just, I'm gonna hark back to this day. I'm just, it's the joy of commander. You play everything. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm going to rely on you guys to to make me an expert in Commander um, and just tell me, you know, like what would fit my playstyle because isn't that kind of like part of what Commander is? You know, you need to find a playstyle like you know what you like. It's not necessarily only color based. Yeah, I mean, it's like um, okay. Filth of care. Well, what do we hold on? Sorry, some stuff just happened. So he says, "Oof, not that." He says, "Yep, Legacy Goblin still plays it." Filth of Casual says, "Wow, he wants it." <laughs> Slucky96 says, Commander is the way. <laughs> so, yeah, I, play, look, I don't want to harp on the Commander thing because we want you back in standard to come and play tournaments and stuff with us because that'll be cool. But you can always come play Commander for fun because that's what it is. It's loads of fun. But, uh, yes, you have to find what suits you best, the way you like to play. Um, and what's great about that is that because Magic is so diverse and it's been around for so long, you have all these options available to you. You can try just about anything. 
Um, sometimes they don't come off. Sometimes they do come off. I mean, you can play the Locust God as your commander and you have that uh, thing of the falls, Sage of the Falls that came out in one of the recent sets and you've immediately got an infinite combo of insects and card draw. You know, so... <laughs> Wait, hang on. You, you can literally choose any card to be your commander. Your any commander creature. has to be a legendary creature. And okay. the cards in your deck are 99 single cards, so no duplicates except for basic lands, but they have to fit within the color code of your commander. So if your commander is a red-blue commander, all your okay. cards have to be red-blue. Yeah? That kind of thing. What's it called? Somebody tell me what it's called. It's called your what? Your, your command, what? Your commander's color? I just, chose my, I just chose my commander. Well, there you Definitely go. Something around this. Who'd you pick? The Scarab God. <laughs> Zombies all the way, baby. <laughs> color identity, says Badger. Color identity. That's it. Color identity. So, color identity is any... For any mana cost written on your commander card. So whether it's the, the CMC, the mana value of the card itself, or an activated ability that you have to pay mana for on the card. So for instance, Golos. Golos is a five drop colorless artifact legendary creature. However, on the card, if you pay all five colors of magic, plus two, you can activate his ability. Therefore, you can play all five colors in a Golos deck. Right, the hated card that brought back zombies. With a land. Yes. <laughs> yes. But that was but, good fun. Wow, cool. This looks like a really cool format. Yeah, this is, this definitely looks like something that I can get into. Yes. And the best part is, I've got a lot of the cards already. So you have a lot of cards. You have awesome. a lot of cards. So that's okay. Badger says, you can see the excitement that look when someone finds out how the commander works, then the brewing starts. <laughs> <laughs> The cards this, in the head start ticking over. Oh, it's crazy. And I, I must tell you, I'm not a good, I'm not one of the best brewers out there. I'm definitely, I'm not even going to say that I am, but I have so much fun putting commander decks together. Just to see, I mean, for me, I have different, different levels of what I consider a win. Um, so in some instances, yes, I want to win the game. And I got very lucky about three nights ago where my uh, Korvold Fake Cursed King a uh, horrible deck, did a terrible thing with Scape Shift and Field of the Dead and Korvold himself and I won the game and it was great fun. But overall, <laughs> what I look for is there's something in my deck that I just want to have happen and if that happens, I'm okay. <laughs> it's so true. You know, you, it's, especially if you plan this combo, you know, you've got like, you need like four cards or five cards to make this combo yeah. really, really pop off. And you know it's never gonna work, you know. But that one in twenty games, it's gonna work. <laughs> Badger, Badger hits it on the on the head. Yeah. Sometimes Crispy does the thing. Fifty percent of the time, it works every time. Just <laughs> 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 exactly how it feels. But it's it's great fun. Uh, but I think in a way, that's kind of the same for Magic everywhere. I mean, if I look at this current Sultai Ultimatum deck that's going off, when that yes. deck pops off. It just pops off and it's so much fun to see when it does. Obviously not when you're playing against it, but yeah. you know, when you're playing it or if you're watching a good game of, of standard and that deck goes off, I mean, it's just, it's really good magic to watch because it's what the game was designed to do was to have these combos that just work and do these cool things and and make your opponent swear at you and throw their desk out the window and stuff, you know? <laughs> <laughs> I know how, I'm just looking at the ultimatum cards now again, you know, it's uh, when these things were launched, uh, Genesis ultimatum was without doubt my favorite. Um, That's the one. <laughs> yeah, then, then you just pull like all of these massive creature cards and things. It's, uh, yeah, the, the ultimatum cards, definitely good prints. I think they may have broken the game a little bit, but I mean, it hasn't been banned or restricted, you know, so no. which means that they, they're doing something right. And That's actually they, an interesting yeah. point. We haven't had a ban, a proper ban, yeah. In about three sets don't, now. <laughs> don't, don't say it, Crispin. Don't Touch, say I'm, it. I'm touching wood. I'm, I'm t holding my table. Don't say it. I got it. I got it. it, it, it. Without a doubt. I'm holding the table. Gonna it's all good. Now. It's going to happen now. Now they're going to ban something. They're going to ban tomorrow. Genesis Ultimatum you. tomorrow. If they ban a card out of my deck, Crispy, it's your fault. <laughs> they're going to ban Professor Onyx, bro. That's what they're banning. Don't do it. Don't do it. <laughs> you know, I, I really do think that the, the, the way that... The way that they ban cards, I've always found is, is quite interesting because they, they look at what cards are present in 
in a deck, okay, and in, in terms of the competitive scene, you know, so the top five decks, you know, like 60% of them run this or whatever, okay, which which I find quite interesting, okay, and I mean, by, by no means have I been a game creator, you know, or specializing in cards, but my question is, you kind of need to look at the enablers of the deck, okay, the enablers of that specific card, because let's, let's take, for instance, okay, let's take the ultimatum cards, it's not the ultimatum cards that's broken at its core, okay, it's the stuff that actually gets you to play the ultimatum quite quickly. And that's why when, when looking at the current meta, I, I just don't get Ram. You know, Ram <laughs> was, it's, it, 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 yeah. I mean, it's, you're it, a it forest, Harry. it's easy to cast spells this, this early in the game. But um, but yet here we are, you know, with uh, with a game in the states where it is at the moment. Well, I mean, hold on. Let's just think about what you said, and this has been my argument from a ways back. So so when one of the bigger bans dropped in recent memory, it was the ban on Agent of Treachery and Fires of Invention. Whereas yeah. it wasn't it wasn't the agent that was a problem. It was or the, the fire. It was it was the it was the being able to cast something for free. Yeah. And that was the problem. So instead of taking care of that, they took care of the cards that you were casting for free. Mm. And I was like, but hold on. <laughs> that that wasn't the problem, you know. Put an agent, you can kill an agent. It's no problem. It's the fact that you can play the agent for free. Yeah. That's the problem. You know, so it's just, it's interesting the way bands work. I mean, Uro, obviously, Uro just got way too powerful and things like, hold on, we got stuff happening here, hold on. People are yelling for, hey, listen, we have no sway over wizards, we can't tell them what to do, but yes, if they could unban one Winota in Historic, that would be good, because Maxis is a pain in the ass too. <laughs> okay, yeah. WRG Switch says, no, don't unban Winota. <laughs> That's you. <laughs> oh dear. Fault of Casual, these two were banned due to the shells they were... Yeah, that's correct. Agent, why was Agent the problem? <laughs> Bless you. Agent was not the problem. Agent was the problem. If anything was the problem, it was Luca when he he could bring Agent out. That, exactly. I think that would be the problem. Not but that came Agent later. Itself. That came later, though. It was... The, the ban was... What was the ban? What was... The, how was... It was the cheating out. It was during... Fires of Invention. It was all... Theros, yeah, it was it? just before, it was just after the Icoria set dropped. Yeah, it was a, it was a big thing. It was Luca. Luca there we go. Cora says Luca it was Luca. Was the then it was Luca. <laughs> you know, I think Kamikaze Badger actually hits the nail on the head when he says, uh, "You know, ramp is strange." Here's me going through hoops, cheating out a crater hoof. Then there's the opponent ramping and just hard casting Yugen. That's exactly what I'm talking about. For sure. You know, it's, uh, it's it's well, absolutely ridiculous, you know. But if 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 you look at the cards in play currently, okay, versus the the cards that were banned quite a while ago, let, let's go back to Kaladesh, okay. In Kaladesh, there was a really really amazing card called Smuggler's Copter. Okay. Okay. Too generic. Okay, it's a vehicle card, so too generic for a three three with crew one. Okay. So it's flying. Whenever Smuggler's Cop Copter attacks or blocks, you may draw a card. If you do, discard a card. Doesn't sound that like nasty, you know, and I mean there's there's plenty of stuff that can get rid of it. You know, there's burn spells, etc. But yet they focus on like, yeah, look at the game state now, you know. I mean this is not ban worthy. Come on, let's go back here. Yeah, no. The, there there is some interest I mean like there were there were some bands that I just felt were kind of unnecessary recently. But hey, you know, these things happen. I think everybody was yelling for Uro. What I found what I found unnecessary was banning to fairy right before. <laughs> this is why we need paper series, guys. This is why we need paper series. <laughs> Apparently, we got disconnected. <laughs> okay, we're back. <sighs> Yay. There we go. Okay. Round two fight. Sure, okay. Where were we? We were talking about a whole bunch of crazy stuff. You were talking about old cards and crazy cards and all that kind of things. And Fox Club last Cora jumped in. She said it was Luca and Fires and Yorian without tax. Remember, it was before Companion Tax. Yeah. That's what it was. And I said Teferi ban, and then that's when the stream died. So you see, you said, but you oh, said the bad died. word. You said Teferi. I did. It's all your fault. I blame you. Welcome back. Splash two for everything <laughs> Okay, no to fairy talk or it'll happen again, says Badger. Stop it, Adam. <laughs> I'm not so sure about that. 
Copter wasn't that, that, that good. It was good, but not that good. Which copter are we talking but, about? But, yeah, Christian. Um, the Smuggler's Copter. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. I want to go back to a card that you mentioned, okay? Um, where, where, where you said... Were you saying that Uro wasn't supposed to be banned? No, no. Uro definitely needed a ban. In yeah, that definitely needed a ban. I know. In, in my opinion, I think Uro definitely needed a ban. I think at the time when the ban came, I actually think the ban was late. Um, I think that Uro had dominated the meta for far too long. Um, there was just, yeah. it was a broken card and it was being used in broken ways. Um, uh, yeah, I mean, it's a cool card, especially in like Commando or something like that. Bringing Uro out is nice. I wouldn't play Uro as my commander, but I would definitely stick it in one of the, as one of the 99 in a deck that ran the Simic Colors. But I mean, it's um, yeah. I just think that in standard at the time, it was it was a ridiculously powerful tool in a deck, and it was being way overplayed. Um, Dude, yeah. still, Uro is a classic example of of how not to design a card. That that card was literally it, it, it was broken. Like at its core, it was just badly designed. It's, um, I mean, what the hell, man? You, you literally bring it in, it sacks itself, you draw cards, you gain life, you know, you bring it back, you know, you just keep on, like, putting stuff in your graveyard. It's, nah, come on, guys. It's not even magic with, it's, it's, it's magic without effort, any effort. But this is what Wizards does. Let's print overpowered Simic things. Yeah. And make people, bad, make people buy them and then ban them just after everybody gets play sets of them. You yeah, I think that, that was I think that was one of the main reasons that people were upset about the ban. Um, yeah. So just give me a second. This one ran off. Uh, yeah, we can go into the whole semicon, but like, uh, what was it? Oko, horrible. I just wanted to say Oko. You know, like this. Horrible. You know, which looks. He, he what? I think it was out there for like a month or two, and then they banned that card immediately. Yeah. But once again, okay, you know, it wasn't Oko solely which was the problem, okay? Like, it's, it's, you've got the, the, the goose. It was the goose. Goose uh, was the goose that allowed him to get out so, so quickly. And you couldn't counter anything, you know, by the time, you know, Oko hits the board, you know, it's... It's it, done. Uh, oh. Basically done. And yes, I do sound, sound salty about the Urogan. <laughs> I loved casting it. I know what it did to opponents. That's why I loved casting it. The only thing that that card really needed was for you to, like, discard a card or sack a creature. I think that it would have been banned within two weeks of its release. <laughs> yeah, no. So so, tell us, um, Alvin, what's, what's happening with uh, White Rabbit? What are you guys busy up doing? Uh, what, what are you guys up to? Anything exciting happening? Uh, yes, no, I mean, we, it's, it's White Rabbit Gaming. There's always exciting stuff happening in the background. Um, so we, uh, we're currently also working, we've, we've actually been working on, on quite a big big project um, for White Rabbit Gaming. We wanted to launch it um, November last year, but unfortunately due to like uh, various admin issues, we, we couldn't get it out and done. Uh, the good news is the admin issues is now the result. So we're just building the rest of the of the infrastructure around it, which should be done um, fairly soon, I reckon within the next couple of weeks. So we're launching something then. And then we're working on a, on a bigger project, which um, which we hope to launch Hopefully July, August, right about there. And um, cool. yeah, more news to come through that as well. We got buy-in from majority of people that need to be involved. There's still a few conversations that we need to have. Um, and yeah, then we can run with that as well. But other than that, just um, yeah, some some content coming, which we're gonna be launching from the 1st of May onwards. Um, cool. Yeah, but the, but the big things that's that's going to happen will probably happen May, June, and then the next thing, July, August. And then we've also got a couple of campaigns running as well. Um, you would have seen some, or may, maybe you haven't. Uh, recently in the in the esports scene, there's been a resurgence of of bullying, cyber bullying, and yeah. uh, it's 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 something that lies quite close to my heart. I'm I'm not a um, not a fan at all. You know, I've, I've got um, very I've got a very strong stance against um, cyber bullying, any kind of bullying, really. <laughs> So we, um, we're working on something really nice there. And then two other campaigns as well that we'll be launching throughout the year. That's great stuff, man. Uh, the the cyberbully thing is also very close to, I mean, all of our hearts, basically. You know, bullying, Any, bullying is yeah, not I'm, cool. I'm, I personally hate it. And Crispin knows what I feel about 
the the whole negativity that that surrounds it. I I don't want I want people to have fun when they play, not sit in this bubble of being bullied or being spoken to in a certain way. I just don't like that at all. Mm. No, same. It's uh, I I don't tolerate that. I mean, there's 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 a bunch of stuff that I don't tolerate. Is uh, there's a bunch of stuff that I that I do tolerate, like banter. I'm I'm a huge fan of banter. Um, yeah, no, banter banter's banter's yeah, that's like top yeah. of my list. Believe it or not, eh, there's some there's some people that absolutely cannot handle like friendly banter. So um, smack talk is yeah, good I'm, for you. Big pardon. Smack talk is good for you. Yeah, I completely agree. But. Um, <laughs> But yeah, so bullying, no, not a fan, you know, it's, um, there's, there's, there's no need for it. What is banter, says Badger. If you don't know, we're not going to tell you. Shut up. Um, Filth of Casual says, how do, you see, how do you see face-to-face -face gaming change in a COVID world? Oh, this, is, this is such a controversial question um, because of the answer that I'm going to give you, you know, it's... Um, so the whole the whole COVID thing, I think. Uh, look, I mean, I'm 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 of the opinion that you know we obviously need to be careful. Um, you know, we we can't be irresponsible. I mean, it's a it's it's a reality. It's out there. You know, we need to ensure that we that we keep everyone around us safe. Um, that to me is my first priority. And and add on to that question is COVID's not going to be around forever. All right, it's um it it is going to be you know it's it's, it's going to come under control. It is going to. Um, get to a point where we reach herd immunity. Yes, the virus might evolve, but also human beings evolve. Um, it's it's literally it's, it's it's genetics. So how do I see face-to-face -face gaming evolve? If you look at esports, uh, that's that's a that's a good example of where to go immediately. I mean, esports have you know they've already changed all of the tournaments that they play at. You know, they they just made sure that um, they they comply with certain COVID COVID regulations. So make sure there's distance between players. Make sure that you yeah. Up, make sure you only use your own gear. And to be honest, if you if you just go back to basics, I think if if um, if we just continue doing stuff like this, okay, make sure that we apply the basics whenever we go to events, okay. Like if if there's someone there, you know, that's sneezing, rather stay away from them. Um, or if you need to sneeze, you know, turn away from people. You know, I, I, th I think COVID has just made us a lot more aware of personal hygiene and and personal space, which which is not a bad thing. And I do think that that will that will remain. It's it's a consumer thing that will remain with us for many many years. So I do see that it is going to get better, but people will be a lot more aware of um, of their personal space and hygiene moving forward. Core is going to shout at you. Last, <laughs> 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 uh, I completely understand. I've, I've actually got a got a got a mate who's a virologist. Um, so, and, and, you know, we've, we've had conversations on this as well, and, uh, I understand it. So it's a lot more complicated than that, you know, but, um, I do think that it, it's, it's, it's not going to be the massive issue that we have at the moment for the rest of our lives. But, um, then again, I'm not a geneticist. I'm not a, you know, biochemist or anything like that. That's just my personal opinion. Um, I do think what I'm going to do from my keep distance. I so think distance to me is the biggest thing, you know, common if, I, sense. if I don't know you and I don't trust you. Then don't move into my bubble. That's going to creep me out. <laughs> keep it, man. Keep it. <laughs> Common sense. Common sense is a lot to do with everything, I think. But Adam, Adam, before we continue, while we still have Alvin here, because I know that he's got to run away very soon. Yes. But don't we have a... We've got a... We've got a it's okay. A, I, can, I can push it a few minutes if you need. We've got a 200 back entry into Egg 11. That's up for grabs, don't we? We do. And why we have this is because our current champion can't make it due to exams. Oh, So there will be a so new so egg champion. champion. There will be a new egg champion, yeah. Oh my goodness. Okay, well listen up. I've changed the raffle rules. You don't get to type yeah. raffle this time around. You're actually going to have to pay attention, chat. So here we go. You have five minutes. I'm giving away... One entry worth 200 bucks to Egg 11. I'm opening the giveaway. Do what it says, says. <laughs> You're gonna confuse him so badly. <laughs> <I> know, right? <laughs> <laughs> Pedro just says, don't listen. Raffle! <laughs> You know, like, uh, you know, what was, what, what, you know, what, what was the magic card that, uh, that we talked about, you know, that's uh, one dropper that 
drops other goblins. Yeah, no, we could have done that too. Make let's, it a bit more tricky. Let's, let's see how it goes. Okay, I see, you see. <laughs> I remember the goblin. Non-code been lurking and then pops up, enters the raffle. <laughs> it's all good. It's all good. Goblin lackey. No, but you've got it, the exclamation ah, mark. Goblin. goblin he just Googled that. Or he went back into like... Or he went back into the, the stream, like rewound the stream. <laughs> yeah. This is, this is yeah. going to go on. This is going to go. We've got five minutes of this. So we can't, I mean, we can't commentate on the things that they're saying. <laughs> but um, I mean, we could, but I don't think it would be as entertaining as talking about magic itself, you know. <laughs> but... Um, Tell me a bit what's What's coming from your side? You know, so obviously White Rabbit Gaming's got plans, but uh, what's the next big thing for for EGG? Oh, well, so many. Egg but, um, the the first... one that we're currently working on is Egg Eleven, and uh, contract contractually we are doing National Paper Series 2021. That would be in September, the 24th to the 26th. My brain just froze completely right now. Thank you, Alvin. <laughs> Oh, you know, your, your eyes did that little like uh, twitch thingy that Neo does when he was in the Matrix being uploaded with a new program. <laughs> I, I thought it was a little um, rainbow yeah, wheel. No, we, we, we've approached basically most of the LGSs in the country. Um, all the participating ones are on board. Contracts are being signed and they will be sent back by Friday. But as of June, the qualifiers are, are go. So check out all the socials. We will have um, information on prize. The prize pool is going to be insane for the main event. I'm just going to say that. I think it's going to be the biggest for any Magic tournament, probably in the last 10, 10 years, more or less. Yeah. We're looking at something massive on that. Um, there's obviously going to be the play mats. It's going to be, yeah, Bloemfontein for the win. No, I don't think so. Yeah, actually, no, Corey, Corey, if you if you're gonna come play, yes, Bloemfontein for the win. <laughs> uh, yeah, just check out all the socials and see what we're busy planning on. And once everything is in order, we'll let everybody know, and we're gonna have a nice big stream regarding that too. Hopefully, with uh, another celebrity. Yes, that is amazing. Yes. Yeah. Oh, just so everybody knows about the celebrity thing, some celebrities. Are far more celebrity than other celebrities. Yeah, there's so uh, some celebrities have, a bit of a have com- already done this. So we've tried two of the ones that were on the list, and they did this. <laughs> and the two, the two, the two, now, like- the two who did this were the professor, crispy swearing on, screen. and LSV, unfortunately. But we are moving yeah. on to our next target, and we will bring you somebody that you can all come and chat with, um, and it will be it will be cool because it always is. When we it's going to be fun, right? Yeah. Um, but yeah, so we, I mean, we're trying. You know, we do try. We try and do these things for you guys. We try and make things cool and do cool stuff. Something else that Adam didn't mention. Something that's coming up in the very near future. Our Patreon will be up and running. And we will be dropping some really cool Patreon content, et cetera, et cetera, for all y'all out there. Uh, on top of that, all y'all. do keep an eye on unplugyourself.co.za. You should be seeing deck reviews and upgrade guides for the C21 Commander decks. Uh, two of those have already been submitted. Uh, Cora's review of Quandrix is, 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 well, should be there. And uh, Ryan Uren from Potchefstroom his review of the Witherbloom deck, which I must tell you, looks like a spectacular deck, uh, is also going to be up really soon. Yeah, so that's a lot of fun. Keep that it, keep that deck's a lot of fun. That deck's actually making me consider playing uh, Commander, to be honest. Another victim. I want to get one of them. Anyway. Yeah, and uh, <laughs> we, we, we're constantly busy with different little things, but there will be a very, very big thing that we will announce I think within two weeks, Crispy. Yeah. Yeah. So um, keep your eyes on that one as well. And we see how far we can take this game and where this game, this game can take the community. Injuries have stopped for the draw. Somebody has won. Dude, that's all we want. You know, we want to see tournaments again, like local store tournaments with like 80, 100 participants playing for a box boosters. 
or maybe 10 grand cash. <coughs> Can I win? <laughs> I don't know, Christian. Can you? I don't think so. <laughs> uh, does white guy mean white rabbit game team? Fight the good fight, man. I think we can turn things around pretty damn decently in this country. Dude, since I actually got introduced to you, the, the amount of stuff that you guys have have managed to complete is nothing short of admirable. Hey, it's um, thanks, man. It's pretty intense, yeah. So I mean, you know, you you, you know, you say you keep up the good fight, hey, but uh, the work that the that, that you guys have been doing at EGG has been has been nothing short of spectacular. I just uh, just keep it up. No, it's I just got me. a great Adam, team behind me. Adam has nothing to do uh, with it. Yeah, it's all crispy. It's all Adam crispy. sleeps all day and I work. I, I just chill in the background and you know. he sleeps all day, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, but thanks, Alvain. That's, that's actually that's very cool of you to say, man. Yeah, anytime. We have we have four I entries into our raffle, which wasn't a raffle. Our raffle that was an egg. Should we should we pick a winner? Yeah, let's pick a winner. Okay. And the winner are Or Filth of Casual! Da, 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 ah. da. Sponsors winning raffles, eh? Mm. Who's winning raffles? Sponsors winning raffles. Oh, rigged. Rigged, I tell you. Well, at least now they're going to come play. You now know. he's got to come play. Now he doesn't, have, play. Um, he doesn't have an excuse now. That's right. Because <laughs> he's in. <laughs> He's in, he's got to come play. I just, for me, it's always a case of like, the entry's open and then we like enter and now it's a case of now I must come up with a deck to get my ass kicked with again. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's always my thing, but anyway. Yeah, congrats, Jay. Um, I'll send you over the link a little bit later once we're done with this stream. And then I've got to reply to about 20 other messages for registrations on that one. Only 20. Only 20, eh? Only 20 on day one. Only 20. <sighs> That's no good at all. That's no good at all. I expected at least, you know, 50, 100. You should have folded up on day one. Yeah. yeah we will. Gone to the back of egg life. <laughs> How many signs do you have already for it? Badger says, yeah, I we think wanna, my we Twitch died. This one big. I missed the link to White Rabbit stream. Was there one? There you yes, go. there was. There, there it is. Go. Back in. It's back in. There you go. Yeah, no, thanks, uh, thanks a lot, Alvin. Always a great chatting with you, man. Um, I think we have had a chat before, actually, on stream. Mm, with, yeah. uh, just before Comic Con, I think you got, yeah, you guys actually put in quite a bit of cash for Comic Con. Correct, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Quite a bit. Thanks we like people who do that. <laughs> <laughs> you know. But yeah, I'm, uh, Kristen, thank, thanks, guys. It was uh, always fun chatting to you guys. Thank you very much for the invite. Okay, and so uh, from, from White Rabbit Game, I uh, just wishing you guys all the best. And um, yeah, hopefully we can in future like pick up a pick up a G athlete. Sometime. I'm still I'm having a hard time convincing the board to um, you know to do it. But you never know. You know, it's, uh, I think we. Yeah, we can, we can definitely make an impact there, but... Uh, You've got some really good talent in these ranks. So you are in the WhatsApp group, uh, Alvin. Yeah. You, know, you know what gets spoken about there. And um, just off the top of my head, Cora and Rashad are just like really great Magic players. Mm. So yeah, maybe, maybe one day down the line we can do something along. Yeah, you never know. Also, don't you forget, never know. See where it goes. <laughs> Wednesday night, right here, Easy Gaming Group. Come on, this. Come and check it out. Um, I'll, I'll do it from next week, Wednesday onwards, um. Uh, because this week is a little bit intense. But uh, but yeah, next week my workload returns to normal, so I'm allowed to have evenings to myself again. All right, fantastic. Well, Sounds next week night. should be interesting because next week we've decided that we're going to try and bring uh, some of our most high-powered decks to to the battlefield, which should be kind of interesting. One of those decks being a, a Golos ah, deck no. that I spoke to you about. <laughs> But anyway, so it's a gentle introduction, to Commander. Yeah, just a gentle introduction. <laughs> um, had just a gentle. Some of the players <laughs> in many years back, says Cora. Okay, here we go. Cora is actually playing against some of you all. But there we go. So yeah. So listen, I mean, thanks again from our side. Um, and I don't know, Adam, is there anything else that we're doing? Are we saying anything else? Are we doing anything else? Or is that it for this evening? I think we've been hit by enough. 
enough uh, tech issues <laughs> to, yeah, to safely we, call we it a night. Issues. <laughs> and day issues and life issues. And once again, Olvain, thanks a lot, good sir. And look forward to chatting you in the future. Yeah, and join tournaments, man. Come play with us. Will do. Just uh, give me time to build a proper deck again, I guess. <laughs> no. Great stuff, man. No, because no, then you'll be good. Thanks so much. <laughs> 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 All right, Joel. Chad, thank you for joining us as always. It's always a pleasure having you guys around, having your nonsense and your, well, when I say nonsense, I refer specifically to Badger. Um, but for the rest of you, thank you very much for, for joining us. It's always a good time here on the Easy Gaming Group channel. Don't forget, tomorrow night I'm on, on Crispy One and we're doing jank nonsense. And on Wednesday night, back here for Command This with the upgraded C21 Precon decks. That upgrade sponsored by Top Deck, those decks sponsored by Unplug Yourself. So we are really, really looking forward to Wednesday night when I get to bring Silver Quill to the table. Politics is back. And until then, you all stay healthy, stay safe. Peace and love. Thank you for joining us. <laughs>